Hello everybody and welcome back to the Galactic Armory. It's been a while since we've done one of these helmet tutorials, but I'm very excited for this one because it is the OG himself, Captain Rex. This has been one of my most highly requested helmets, and I've had the files out there for a long time, I just haven't been able to carve out the time in order to finish a helmet and then complete this tutorial. So thank you guys for your patience. That being said, I'm very excited to bring this to you guys. So let's get right into it. Now I'm gonna start with the pieces already 3D printed, but if you're looking to 3D print this yourself, check out the link in the description. That's where the files will be. Also, if you don't have access to a 3D printer, I do sell prints of this helmet, starting with exactly what you see me starting with on my shop online. So if you wanna help support the channel and complete this project yourself, check out that link in the description as well. Now I've sliced up and printed the helmet in three main pieces, the front, the back, and the top. I split it up just so it's kind of easier to print on a 3D printer. You can try and print it all at once, but I found that there's a lot that can go wrong with 3D printing, and if something goes wrong halfway through a helmet print, it can be really difficult to pick up where you left off, and you might just have to throw away the whole thing. So this way, you kind of minimize your risk of catastrophic failure by printing it in three individual pieces. Say so if the print fails halfway through, you only have to throw away or recycle half of one piece. So you'll see me sanding the edges of all the different parts of the helmet. That is going to help our glue stick a lot better, as well as make the seam between all the pieces as minimal as possible. Obviously, we don't wanna see the seams on the finished product, so we wanna do our best to hide them as early as possible. Once we have all the edges sanded down, we'll use some cyanoacrylate super glue just to hold them in place and glue them all together. And you'll see me using a soldering iron to kind of weld the pieces together on the inside. That end gets really hot. It's it's used for melting solder, which is like a metal that you use for uh, completing circuits and electronics. But I like to use this old dirty one for welding PLA prints. It provides a pretty strong bond since it's physically fusing the pieces together, but you can always use something like E6000 along the inside seams, and it'll do just basically as well of a job as the soldering iron does. Now you wanna make sure that the pieces are as perfectly aligned as possible. If there's an overhang on one side or they're not perfectly lined up, it's gonna cause a lot of work for us down the line. So make sure your helmet is as perfectly aligned as possible. I'm gonna leave the antenna off for now so that we can complete that later on. But now that we have the main body all assembled, we can move on to smoothing out the 3D print line. Now the day may come where we don't have to sand down the 3D printer lines. That's mostly the case in like SLA printing where they print their layer lines at the nanometer level. But as far as FDM printing or like plastic printing goes, we're gonna have to smooth out the lines so that our surface is nice and smooth and that you can't even tell it was 3D printed. Now my material of choice right now is Bondo Glazing and Spot Putty. It's an auto body product used to fill in dents and scratches on cars. So it comes out as like a red toothpaste, you rub it on all over the helmet, and after a few hours it will harden. Once it's hardened, we'll be able to sand it smooth. Now be sure and wear gloves for this stuff. I also wear a respirator since it doesn't smell too good. And just try your best not to let this stuff touch your skin. I'm gonna go over the entire helmet, just rubbing in the Bondo with my fingers trying to reach all the areas, paying special attention to the creases between the parts that we mentioned earlier, and we'll let this Bondo cure overnight. It hardens in about like four to six hours totally, but we'll let it sit overnight just to be sure. Now, many of you guys noticed this helmet in the background in some of my previous helmet tutorials, so I must congratulate your sharp eye. It was indeed Captain Rex. Now you see me here using a mouse sander with about a 120 grit pad of sandpaper on it. This is just to kind of expedite the sanding process since it's kind of a long and tedious one. I use the mouse sander to get a lot of the high spots around the helmet. We don't want to sand away all the Bondo or else this whole thing was for nothing. So don't go too overboard with it. You definitely want to do this outside or in a space that you can easily clean up. And you definitely want to wear a respirator for this because it's going to throw a lot of dust everywhere and you definitely don't want to be breathing this in. Once we've completed a single go around with the mouse sander, we can switch over to hand sanding. Now hand sanding is basically the same principle as with the mouse sander, except this time we can get into all the little nooks and crannies of the helmet that we couldn't reach with the mouse sander. We're using a 120 grit, just a little scrap piece of sandpaper, and we're gonna go around the entire helmet, not totally sanding off all the Bondo. We need that Bondo to fill in the printer lines, 
but you want to make sure that the surface you're sanding is smooth. Once we've sanded down the entire helmet, we can move on to the next step of the smoothing process. Now we're going to use another product that you can find in the automotive section, Rust-Oleum Filler and Sandable Primer. Now this stuff is like really thick spray paint and what it's going to do is fill in some of the layer lines that we couldn't quite reach with the Bondo or fill in some of the areas that we maybe sanded too much of the Bondo away. Since it's an aerosol, it can really work itself into the very hard to reach areas and it also acts as a nice like base coat before we start painting. Now, we're definitely gonna sand down the filler primer again, this time with a higher grit sandpaper, but if you feel like there's still some areas that need a little bit more work, like you can see the horizontal printer lines in them, don't be afraid to apply more Bondo, sand it down, apply more filler primer, sand it down, until you're happy with how the helmet looks. I often go through two or three iterations of the Bondo filler primer process, sanding all the way in between, so don't feel bad if this step takes a long time to complete because really this is where you're going to put in a bulk of the effort. I won't lie there's a lot of sanding involved but having the helmet be perfectly smooth is vital to a very clean paint job. It doesn't have to be perfectly smooth just up to the level of your own satisfaction. So once you're happy with the helmet we can start laying down some of the base colors for the paint job. Now Rex like many of the clones has a white base coat so for that, we're going to be using a Rust-Oleum Ultra Matte White. Be sure to do thin layers of paint. You definitely don't want any runs or streaks in the paint. Otherwise, you'd have to wait for them to dry and then sand them down again. So just take your time with it. Do it in two or three coats and you should be good. So once you've done two or three coats of the base white, we can start taping out the design for the blue around his visor. Now for this, I use some thinner masking tape to get out the details. I kind of just eyeball this. You definitely want to make sure that both sides are symmetrical as best as you can. So you'll see me doing a lot of like measuring and just eyeballing it to make sure that they are both the same. You can see I've got a nice reference picture up and I'm trying to align up as many of the details as possible. Like for instance, I use the teeth from the frown as a point of reference. I can see that the blue goes down the middle of the first one from the middle. For the J guys on the forehead, I just lay down some tape and then trace out the eye design with a pencil first, make sure that they are both pretty much the same, and then I'll cut it out with an X-Acto knife. You really, 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 really want to make sure that both of the eyes are the same, because you will be able to tell if they're lopsided or if one is bigger than the other. So just really take your time with it. Now for the blue, I used a blue from Artist's Loft, and it kind of took me a couple of tries to get it right. So for my first attempt, I laid down too many layers and the blue actually got a little bit too dark. So I ended up just peeling it off, washing it off, retaping the helmet, and then trying again. So this is why the helmet suddenly has some blue tape on it. Now for the animated Captain Rex, I didn't want to do a solid paint job like with a rattle can, for instance. If you look very closely at the paint job on his helmet, it has a lot of very little scratches on it, almost invisible but it has a certain texture that looks painted on with a paintbrush. So I'm gonna try and replicate that as best as I can. Now you might have heard of dry brushing, which involves like brushing away a majority of the paint and then adding details. I'm doing something similar to that, except I'm not brushing off a majority of the paint, maybe about 70% of the paint. That way I can apply it in very thin layers and give it that scratched paint effect that I'm looking for. Now after one layer of paint across the visor, it's a little bit too light, so I'm gonna go over it again, adding another layer, but after that I'm gonna stop. I feel like two layers is the real sweet spot of the shade of blue that I'm going for. Not too light and not too dark. And since we're brushing it on with a paintbrush, we can kind of control the direction of those bristle lines. I try and point them all outward from the visor. And again, I'm not trying to get a complete fill. So if some areas don't get paint, you can if you can still see some white underneath, that's okay. We're gonna let this paint dry for a couple hours and then we'll be able to peel off the tape. Peeling off the tape is always one of my most favorite parts. You get to see the crisp lines underneath and it really starts to bring life to the helmet. Now, if some paint accidentally seeped underneath the tape, you can use an X-Acto knife to just kind of chip it away very gently. Now that we've got the blue of the helmet, we can tape it again to paint in the frown and then start to paint some of the details around the helmet, like the little cheek vents, the ear aerators, and the antenna. So as you can see, I've done some painting of the extras around the helmet. 
but now is time for the weld lines, what Captain Rex is most famous for and the most unique part of his helmet. If you guys didn't know, Captain Rex actually took his favorite parts from the Phase 1 helmets and welded them to his favorite parts of the Phase 2 helmets. That's why you see weld lines on the helmet, and that's what makes his helmet unique. Now here I mix up a couple paints to get the base weld that we're gonna start with. Before I start painting, I also just trace out the weld lines with a pencil to make sure I'm aligned and to make sure that both sides are symmetrical. Once that's done, I start gently dabbing the paint onto the weld lines to make it kind of uneven and random with the effect. You don't wanna make it too uniform since the welds are not perfect, they have a little bit of roughness to them. Now, the weld above the eyes looked a little bit different in the reference images I was looking at compared to the welds on the cheek. It was a bit more pronounced, a bit wider, and spread out more over an area. So what I do here is lay over some paint and then rub it upwards with a paper towel to kind of scuff it upwards, make it a little bit more pronounced, a little bit wider, and having it be a little bit dirtier looking than the welds on the cheek. Now it's time to add a little bit of life to the welds, give them some more detail, some more layers, so that they look more real. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is use a very light blue and just trace it along the middle of the weld lines on the cheek. This gives it a little bit more life and some nice extra details. Now once that's complete, I'm going to add a very thin line of white on top of that. It's going to give it even more detail, make it look even more real, and make the weld lines look like they have a little bit of reflectivity in them. So now we have a very nice looking helmet but we're gonna be adding a few more details to it that make it look even better. And we're gonna start the weathering process, and the first thing we're gonna do is use an airbrush with some black paint in there to add some details to the creases of the helmet. Right now, it's all very uniform, very white, and that's just not realistic. In real life, dirt and grime accumulate in the hard edges of the helmet since those areas are much harder to clean. So you'll see me just going around the entire helmet gently airbrushing some black in those deep corners and this really gives the helmet some life. You can definitely overdo it at this step, so be a little bit cautious and be prepared to hold yourself back. One of the final weathering steps I'm gonna do to this helmet is do a yellow wash. Now normally I've done a black wash, but some of the reference images I was looking at of Captain Rex, the face is a bit more, or has a yellow tint to it. So with doing a yellow wash, we're gonna add some light yellowing to the face, and it's going to add to the overall weathering effect of the helmet. Just mix some yellow paint in with some water, and then just brush it onto the face and wipe it off with a paper towel shortly after. Now, you're not gonna be able to wipe off all the paint, and that's what we're going for. We want some of that yellow paint to be left behind, but just a little bit of it. Now we're gonna move on to the visor material, and for that, we're gonna use a black grinding shield. Now, visors were a little bit hard to come by when I filmed this video, so this one is actually a clear visor with some black window tint. You should be able to find some visors online now. Just search Hobart face shield. You might have to buy it from a third party site, but you should be okay. We're gonna cut out the grinding shield in the shape of the visor that we need, and then we're going to affix it to the interior of the helmet with some epoxy putty. That putty is gonna do a great job at holding down the visor since it can latch on to the 3D print lines on the inside of the helmet. I attach the putty to the four corners of the visor and it holds it in place really well once it's hardened. One of the final details that we need to add to the helmet is the tally marks on the sides. Now Captain Rex has a total of 27 tallies on the right side and 30 tallies on the left for a total of 57. Now from what I understand, these tallies are kind of up for debate as to what they mean. They could be a number of significant droid kills such as like super battle droids or commando droids, tactical droids, any one of those. It's obviously not the count of the total B1 droids that he's destroyed since that would be like in the tens of thousands. Some theories are that it's the number of men he was close to that he lost during the war. I believed for a while that it was the total number of campaigns he was in during the total war. For example, the Umbara campaign would be a single tally or any other planet that he was on would be a single tally. That was my guess, but Dave Filoni actually came out and said that it was like a kill count. So the theory that it represents significant droid kills is probably closer to reality. But I don't think there's any definitive explanation as to what these marks mean. So if you guys have a hypothesis as to what they mean, be sure and leave them in the comments. Now the final thing that we need to do for this helmet is fill in the area behind the teeth. Right now it's just open air, 
people could see your mouth if they really wanted to. So we need to fill that in with something. And for that, we're gonna be using a layered mosquito net. These things are really cheap. I got, I got a full head net for only a dollar and that can last me about two or three helmets. We're gonna cut out a section long enough to fill out the entire brow and about four times as high as we need. That way we can layer it over itself three or four times so that it becomes thick enough where you can't really see through it. I just affix it to the backside using some hot glue since it's pretty easy to push through the mesh and keep it in place. So now if we take a closer look at the teeth, we can see the nice detail behind it. it gives it a very realistic view. And now nobody can see your smile through the helmet. So there you go guys, that is how I made my own Captain Rex helmet from a raw 3D print. Remember, you can check out the links in the descriptions to either the files or the raw prints themselves if you want to complete this project. This was a really fun one to make. Now this is the animated Captain Rex, but I also have files for the realistic Captain Rex, so be on the lookout for that sometime in the future. I want to thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope that you learned something. And as always, I hope that you're feeling confident enough to try out a project like this yourself. It is massively rewarding to see the finished product, and it can be a really fun hobby to keep you busy. Thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you again in the next video.